Let's move to the one exhibition we want to talk about from tonight. Uh, and I'm not speaking of Brooks Barnheiser's breakout night, by the way. I figured you would want to work that into the show somehow. Uh, can, do you want to read his line real quick? It was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, damn, Skippy. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Let me pull it up. I, I'm, I, people think like I'm I'm messing around and I'm joking. He's going to be the Robin to Boo Booey's Batman. And I'm letting you know right now, he's going to be a better Robin than Chase Audige was, by the way. Let that be known. We'll see about that. We'll see. Uh, I, I promise. I promise you, he will be. Hold on one second. Let me find this. He his stat line tonight in a scrimmage. In a scrimmage, by the way, I know you don't. I know how you feel about scrimmages. Twenty nine points, seven rebounds, four assists, five steals, and four blocks. Was that supposed to mean I don't care about scrimmages? This is also look at look look at this man. <laughs> he looks like guy. Yeah, he looks like guy <laughs> with HGH. Yeah, I uh, I can't believe you're acting like I don't care about scrimmages, though. Like, do you know me? You just started saying that we should throw the Marquette Michigan scrimmage out the window. You only the Mar- only the Marquette one because it wasn't a real scrimmage. This was a, this is from a scrimmage. This is from an exhibition. Exhibition different than a scrimmage. Secret scrimmage, not real. Exhibition, real. <laughs> Okay, I, I I just had to check. Okay, yeah, it's a different thing. Uh, <laughs> I want to overreact to everything, man. Don't minimize that. I'm glad Brooks did great. Uh, can we call Brooks a friend of the show? I think he has he he's shown love to the show, even though he hasn't come on the show, right? Yeah, he follows me on Twitter. Yeah, the fact that Brooks follows you on Twitter but hasn't put me in contact with Boo yet is really hurtful on an individual level. Yeah. Uh, also, random fact: When we do go to Chicago, we got to go to Halo Burger and get the Boo Booey Burger. Like he has his own NIL burger. We can absolutely do that. We're also going to be playing one on one for the one credential we have to the Champions Classic. So stay tuned for that. There should be some fun content coming from us in the next week. But uh, okay, we we're not here to talk about Northwestern or Chicago. We're here to talk about Purdue, the mm-hmm. uh, best team in the Big Ten on paper to start the season is the Purdue Boilermakers. We have spent all week questioning what we're seeing from them because they lost the scrimmage to Arkansas. But more importantly than a win or a loss, we have not been fans of the Lance Jones in the starting lineup tweak that Matt Painter has been running. Well, tonight they played Grace Carter. They played Grace. I don't mean your sister. I mean Grace University. Grace. I don't know what it is. Grace University, Grace College. The final score was Purdue 98, Grace 51. Purdue had 50 points in the first half, 48 in the second half. Uh, By all accounts, this was an evisceration. With that said, I watched this game. I truly did. I have the box score in front of me. I'll just read some numbers, and then we'll get into what was notable from this game. Uh, First of all, do you know there's two firsts on this Purdue team? I I did not know that. I I did not know where Josh first came from. He's got to be related to Caleb, right? There's a Caleb first and a Josh first. I don't like that, just for the record. But uh, just to get get into numbers, Zach Eady obviously led the team. Uh, he played 17 minutes in this game. He finished with 19 points in 17 minutes, 6 for 12 from the floor. And notably, he attempted a 3, but he did not make it. Uh, pretty much everybody else on this team played under 20 minutes. In fact, the only player on the Purdue team that cracked the 20-minute mark was Camden Heidi. Everybody else played under 20 minutes. It was super balanced. He played like every single guy that's going to play for this team between 12 and 17 minutes. Um, Ethan Morton was out for 17 great minutes of cardio. He was 0 for 2 from the floor, 2 assists, 1 rebound, nothing else notable. Willie Berg, randomly, with a kind of a breakout Berg game. He was 5 for 8 from the floor in 12 minutes, finished with 11 points. And uh, Lance Jones, the much-talked-about, much-maligned, aforementioned Lance Jones, 5 for 8 from the floor, 3 for 6 from the 3-point line. He finished with 13 points in 14 minutes. Uh, We did, on our show earlier today, we did Lance Jones or three other guys. Well, tonight... Lance Jones finished with 13 points. If you add up Cam Heidi, Brian Waddell, and Miles Colvin, they finished with 13 points. Three guys adding up to what you got from one in Lance Jones tonight. Uh, I haven't even mentioned Smith or Lawyer, but I'll just throw it to you before we we do any numbers on those two. What did you think of Purdue tonight? 
I'm going a, I'm to a be careful with my words here. Um, before the Arkansas scrimmage, all I heard was this scrimmage doesn't matter. This is just getting them ready. This exhibition is just getting Purdue ready. It's going to make them better at the end of the year. And all that might be true. And honestly, I probably agree with that. I think that them playing an exhibition on the road at Bud Walton versus an Arkansas team that they struggle with that archetype or that prototype of a team. That's good for them. That's good to do. What you can't do is bounce back, and when they do this against Grace College, then all these narratives change that, oh, you were wrong about Lance Jones. You were wrong about all these other guys. Like, look what they did in this game. This is what they should do in this game. This this Lance Jones should knock down shots against Grace College. It is, uh, facing Grace College is a good game for a 6-1-3 man to get shots off and have a good game. I expect him to do that. And... <laughs> I know Craig's going to listen to this and I love my boy, Craig Bowers. And I like bringing him up when we're talking about Purdue, but before I tuned in to the game and then watched Matthew loves b-ball afterwards, I was watching Craig's tweets and he was sending a lot of tweets about Camden Hyde and what he was doing, and how active he looked and how he was making some very, very athletic plays. Camden Hyde's box score one for four, one for two from three, Five points and five boards. It's I'm it's it's just like I don't know. I you can't flip the narrative when they're playing a team like this. This is what they should do. I don't take anything from this game. Honestly, the one thing I take from this game is that we might have to have a conversation about the TKR breakout sophomore season, Greg. Are we concerned about that at this point? I think that's my one takeaway. Yes, we are. I want to get to that in a second, but first I want to push back on you on Heidi. I think that was a little bit harsh. Here's why. I do think from watching this game, I'm willing to say like, oh my God, red alert on Colvin. I'm willing to say, oh my God, red alert on Waddell, who's giving them nothing in these games. Heidi played the most minutes on the team. I think that's notable because this game meant nothing. Painter could have done whatever he wanted. Tonight he said, let me get Heidi 21 minutes. Let me get nobody else on this team 20 minutes, but let me get Heidi 21 minutes. Second, if Heidi played 40 minutes, because he played 21 minutes tonight, right? Mm-hmm. If he played 40 minutes, I know you're not a per 40 guy. <laughs> Do you know what he did tonight if he played 40 minutes? What? 10 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. Can you do you have do you have a Ethan Morton's per 40 stats, Andy? Do you want Ethan Morton's 40 from tonight? Yeah. If Ethan, if Ethan Morton played 40 minutes tonight, he would have finished with 0 points, 4 assists and 2 rebounds. Okay. Cardio Morton. Cam and Heidi, 10, 10, and 6, though. Like that, that is notable, right? It was a meaningless game. He played the most minutes and he was the most productive wing. Like that, that is meaningful to me. I think uh I'm still very worried about it. I'm very worried about everybody that's not Lance Jones that's a wing on this team. And quite frankly, I'm worried about Lance Jones. But Heidi to me is the guy I can actually see factoring in based on what we've seen now through two competitive games. And uh, I'm throwing out everything from the overseas trip because man, there's overseas trips. Like some teams go on an overseas trip and it's like, okay, we're going to play some professional teams. I don't know where the hell Purdue was. I don't know who they found. (laughs) Like that was, that was barely an overseas trip. Like I'm, I'm sorry. I think your overseas trip, wherever you went, played more competitive teams than Purdue did. Um, and then they had the scrimmage in Mackey that was like the black and gold game. And I swear like Rafael Davis and Robbie Hummel and I don't know who else, probably Glenn Robinson were in the building. Like it just, I'm willing to throw out every single thing we've seen until these two games, but I think these two games matter and I'm very unimpressed with the wings, but I have my eye on Heidi because I think he's getting more of an opportunity and I think he's doing more with his opportunity than the other wings are. With that said, the the story of this game for me is not like, oh, Purdue turned a corner or they looked better. I don't think they did. I think they looked like a top 10 team in the country should against Grace. Like, kudos, pat on the back. Um, Edie, Edie was 6 for 12, man. Edie's not as dominant in either of these games as he was all of last season. I'm sure he will be. I'm not, I'm not worried at all about Zach Edie. But I am like, ha. Ah, you're not doing what he did last year. That, that, that's too straight. That's too straight. 
I'm just that's too straight. Uh, and 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 we're, and we're a podcast that's fair, right? And we're a podcast that tells it how it is. We just got off our last episode, and I mentioned that in the Indiana game that I watched, Kalel Ware is a player that should be dominating in games like this. And that's two straight games that I feel like Zach Eady just hasn't been Zach Eady. So am I worried about it? No, like you said. But facts of the matter is that's two straight games where Zach Eady has not been Zach Eady. And the last game, I give a little bit of a break exhibition against Arkansas. Okay, I give him a little bit of slack. But uh, then once again against this team, uh, the, the question starts to fester in the back of my head. Like I said, he's going to go back to back National Player of the Year. He's going to be good the rest of the season. But there is a little small, minuscule, microscopic piece of me that's like, this is two games in a row where Zach Eady has not been Zach Eady. Yeah, yes. Um, I'm not worried about him. He's going to be fine. But I am like, okay, he hasn't done it in two games. Like, but I'm, I fully expect to come back here after game three and be like, oh, Edie's back. He looks great. But yeah. uh, through, through two, you're right. Here's my issue with tonight. Some guys were good tonight. Don't think it was any of the guys that mattered. I don't think that's good. Um, let, let me just run through what I mean by that. But like, ooh, Willie Berg breakout. That means nothing for Purdue this year. <laughs> like, no, Willie Berg can be as good as he wants against Grace and whoever else they play in exhibition. It just doesn't matter. Willie Berg is the future. And if he's the future, that's good. It's great that Purdue has the next guy lined up. It doesn't matter for this team whatsoever. Lance Jones, it's good to see him shoot well, especially after how harsh I have been individually on Lance Jones. Uh, he was five for eight tonight. He was three for six. I'm not going to completely shrug that off like you did. I know you said he should do it. He should do it. I give him credit for doing it. It matters that he did it, right? It, it absolutely matters that he did it. Um, I hope he does that next game against a good team, and then we can feel stronger about it. The larger issue is, uh, like, their wings are still such a trouble spot, man. Even when Lance Jones was good tonight. Like, let me read you some numbers from the combined wings tonight. Because they all got minutes. tonight. Like, last game against Arkansas, they didn't get minutes. Tonight, they all got minutes. Let me add some things up here. Fletcher Lawyer... Miles Colvin, Brian Waddell, Cam Heidi, and Ethan Morton combined from the floor. I'm going to do the math live on the podcast right now. This is tougher than I thought. Uh, <laughs> five for 24 from the floor tonight. Those guys, Fletcher Lawyer, Colvin, Waddell, Heidi, Morton combined. Five for 24 from the floor. Now I'm going to do three pointers because I think it's going to get even uglier. Uh, well, again, Fletch, Fletch with one for five. Two for 13 from that group of five guys. These guys have to give this team minutes. Like mm -hmm. they just, I, Braden Smith and Zach Eady are good. That group of guys has to play. And I like Fletch is going to be fine. I think Fletch is going to have games where he goes for 20. And then I think he's going to have games where he goes for two on one of five from the floor. I just think that's who he is. I think Purdue can be really good, even if he is that. But if that's who Fletch is, then that means you need Colvin or Heidi or Morton or Gillis or J uh, Jones to be good. Like you just need, or Waddell, somebody in that group has to be good. And all indications right now are that none of them are good. If Lance yeah. Jones is the guy, that's that's still terrifying to me, even though he shot well tonight. Yeah, and and I've I've been on record saying that I think Fletch is going to have a a really good sophomore season, and I think he's going to be really good. And when I look at this Purdue team, and I just put it as simply as I can, Edie Braden Smith, I'm not worried about either of those two players. I think they're going to be really good. I think Fletch is going to be really good too, but I think it would help Fletch out immensely. If when they need somebody to help out Braden Smith and help out Edie, it doesn't always have to be him. Like if they can get a little bit somewhere else from the, from the wing position, I think it'll really help this team. And honestly, like at some point I'd be interested to see if Painter just completely just throws out the whole three man, like trying to figure out who it is and just goes Mason Gillis and just rides with the old guy who can has had games in his career where he's hit like eight threes and, just see where that goes. Cause I feel like eventually that's what it's going to end up being. Yeah. I, I think you're 100% right. Um, man, 
Uh, you mentioned it, Coffin Ren. Are we doing the the red flag? Are we doing that? He was the breakout guy all summer. It was look how good Kaufman Ren is. It's oh my god, he's added to his game. He's going to be versatile. He's going to be able to play next to Edie. We said without Zach Edie, produced still a top ten team in the country because of how in we were on Trey Kaufman Ren. Well, he looks horrible next to Zach Edie right now. He just yeah. does. He's not. He's Clunky. not doing a thing. Yeah, clunky doesn't look like it fits, and it's not like a it's going to get fixed either. I think it might be, it is what it is. Like he's just not going to work next to Edie. Two points, three rebounds, two assists in 14 minutes tonight. Oh, for one from the free throw line. He continues to struggle there. He didn't attempt a three pointer tonight. Um, I don't know what to say. I think Kaufman Ren's incredibly talented. I do. Uh, I just feel like he, he's wasting away. Like it's just clearly not the role for him. Right. Like yeah, if he, he, needs, if, he, he, he needs to be a five. He needs to be a five. And I'd almost rather, like, given what we know he is, I, I almost think it's just better for him to just be the backup center than it is. Like, last year they started first at the four. Then they started Gillis sometimes. They kind of cycled in and out of it. It was never like, oh, that's Kaufman Wren's spot. I think the hope was, given how much better Kaufman Wren got this summer, it's like, oh, we got to reward him and let him play the four and see how it works. I don't think that's best for him. I just I, like, are you really, you're telling me you want Kaufman Ren's minutes in this game to be the fifth option as the four in a really clunky fit with Edie. Wouldn't it just be better to have him play eight minutes a game and be the go-to center in those eight minutes? Yeah, I think it would be. Um, and now that that spurns another question, we can, we can move on, but I do want to get this from you because I have in my head what my ideal Purdue lineup is at this point and what I think gives them the best chance to win. What is it? Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, Mason Gillis, Caleb First, Zach Eady. I'm not in on first. I think the other four I'm in on. Who would you rather have instead of first? So you so you 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 do your lineup. Who are you putting in instead of first? That's the thing. I think all the wings are are not deserving. <laughs> I don't think mm-hmm. any of them are. And you have to pick, there is just, there's no way to get a lineup. There's no way to get a five man lineup. That doesn't include one of these wings that is really underperforming right now. Um, I think Kaufman Ren's still better than any of the wings are. I really do, but I don't love the clunkiness of Kaufman Ren with Edie. I, I like, do, do, do you think Kaufman Ren's better than first? I do. I do. I think. Okay. Uh, see, I, I, see, I've swung. I've swung on it. I don't think he is. Not I think. It, I think if you're just doing the five best players on Purdue's team, position non-specific, I think you're you're Edie Smith, Lawyer, Kaufman, Ren Gillis. I think that's a clear top five. The problem is, I don't think you want to play Kaufman, Ren, and Gillis and Edie together. So if you're going Gillis, you're going Gillis at the four, which means you now have to choose a three that. I think even Matt Painter is underwhelmed with. So I, uh, man, the more we talk this through, I know I keep saying I'm holding Purdue stock. We ranked them number two on our Bleacher Report preseason rankings today. That's down for me from number one in a week. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a really hard time with this. We can't even name an end of game lineup we feel decent about. I Like I imagine if this is Michigan state, not to like compare, because I still think Purdue is better than Michigan state, but like, Michigan State could we could have nine different lineups we feel good about because Michigan State's deep. Like mm-hmm. you, could, you could pick guys off Michigan State's bench and be like, "Those guys are great. Let's play them." Purdue, you're like, we have three good players and nothing else. Like I don't I don't want to play any of these guys right now, and that's really really scary to me that he didn't upgrade in any way because Heidi and Colvin were supposed to be that, and they're just clearly not through a week of the season. Now again, we're overreacting. A month into the season, they could emerge. They absolutely could. Um, but for now, to answer your question, we're going Smith, Lawyer, Gillis, Edie. We're going Camden, Heidi at the three. Yeah. I, I do like that lineup in theory. I think he'll in do theory. things. I think I think he's the only guy you can put at the three that will do things. Straight up. I think Jones, mm-hmm. you'll put out there and he'll shoot and he won't do anything else. I think you put uh, Morton out there, he'll get cardio in. I don't think anybody else would do anything. So that's my lineup. Good job, Purdue. Blowout win. We'll see what happens. We'll keep evaluating you. I feel like we were pretty tough on the Boilermakers tonight. 
Uh, we also said we were um, betting on minus 19 and a half against Samford. I feel great about that. Lock it in. Let's end on yeah. that note.